Hey everyone, this is Baylor, and in this video, I'm going to go into part two of user authentication with PHP. So, in the last video, what we were able to set it up to do is where we can create a new user. And uh, basically, we just create, say, user equals a new user. We can set the user's username, and we can set a password here. Uh, if you remember correctly, we are able to do that just by initializing class if we pass our array through here. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe a array is not the best way to do it just because, you know, we can set it up to work with uh, just a parameter, username, password. Um, and we may change that later on, I don't know, but we can set it this way, you know, or we can come in here and we can set our array, which, yeah, I'm thinking that it's just a pa username, password. Uh, the reason I set it up as array is because... Um, Depending on the circumstances, you could have a setup where when you create a new user like this, you can set up all the user's information uh, just by going in here and saying um, they have a first name and the last name and uh, all this extra stuff, you know. Uh, and you could we could set it up where you could set all that information right here with the array. Okay, so what we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to set it up so that we can go ahead and authenticate a user and pull out their information and stuff. Check their username and password. So before we do that, what we need to do is we need to set it up so we can find a user. So I'm going to create a new method inside of our class here. Um, this is inside our user class. I'm going to create a method here that will be called um, it's going to be a uh, static method and we're going to say find by username. It's going to accept one parameter, and that is going to be username. So uh, essentially what I'm doing with this is I like the find by username syntax. It's like active record. If you ever play with active record, you know, you can say find by title, find by username, and all this stuff. This is just an easy way to do it because it doesn't need to be dynamic right now. We could do it later on if we needed to. Um, but essentially what this will do here is we can come in here and we can say our user is going to be equal to user find by username Baylor Ray. And you remember we actually have a record in our database with the username Baylor Ray. So what I want to do here is first of all debug our user variable. So you can see it's blank right now. So what I'm going to do here is I'm really thinking about going to and taking the Sammy PHP uh, syntax here for instances. Um, I'm going to put it in. I'm going to show it to you real quick. Essentially, what the guy does, and it's really pretty cool. Um, he creates a he created a function here or a method. Uh, it's a static has a static variable called instance, and if instance is null, which means it doesn't exist yet, it hasn't been created then the instance gets turned into a new uh, Sammy instance of the class. And it, he returns the instance at the very end of it. So essentially what's going on here is that every time you want to work with a Sammy object, you don't run new Sammy, you call it like this. You say Sammy equals Sammy instance. And what ends up happening is you can see inside of this format here, we actually create Sammy or the set format method, you can see we say Sammy equals static instance, and we, here we can set um, Sammy um, methods and stuff. Uh, there, there's probably more in here, I just can't, I don't see them right this second. Um, but it's a really neat idea, method, or a, a way to do it. You can see here's another one inside of process, and that's what I'm going to do right now inside of ours. We're just going to create we're just going to completely copy exactly what he has for the most part. Um, just turn on my constructor. I'm just going to throw in a new method. It's going to be static. And I'm going to call this. Let me just restart. Start over with this. Oh, I just keep messing up. And uh, we're going to call this instance. And we're going to say instance equals null. And we're going to say if instance equals null, then, oh, that needs to be static. We're at, and if, stat, if instance is equal to null, then instance is going to be equal to a new instance of our user class. And 
and at the end of it, we're going to return our instance. Okay, so essentially what we can do here is in our find by username, uh, I actually want to return a new instance of our user. And it's because our user is going to hold all the data about the each user stuff. So here what we're going to do is uh, we're going to set a re... I don't know if I should do it like a tutorial format like line by line. Uh, what I'm going to do essentially here is I want to be able to find my username. So I'm going to globalize my MySQL variable just like we used up here in the save method. And I'm going to say MySQL where, and we're going to look for the username, where the username is equal to username. And here what we're going to do is we're just going to set our result. Um, and that's going to be equal to MySQL get inside of our users table. So if we debug our result, you can see that right here we get um, an object and it has our ID, our username, password salt, and hash and salt. Um, so it's actually found our user. If we put something else in here that doesn't exist, then you can see nothing's returned. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a quick if empty um, our result zero. So we're going to make sure that we actually got a result at zero, so found at least one row. row. Um, if we found that row, then what I want to do is I want to set a user variable. It's going to be equal to a new user instance. So here we're creating a new instance of our user variable, or our user class, I'm sorry. And I'm going to say user Oh, user, user data equals user. Here we're going back up. I'm sorry, not user. Result zero. Okay, so what am I doing here exactly? Well, first of all, we try to find a row inside of our database where the username equals username that they pass. We get that row if that row exists. So it's at a key index zero. Uh, then we initialize a new user class, so we get a new instance of it, and we're going to set a variable called user data equal to everything inside of result zero. Uh, and one thing I want to do with that is make it an array. So we're going to force type that to array. And if I debug our user now, you can see this is supposed to be singular. You can see here. Uh, let me change that back and figure out. Oh, if not empty, I'm not paying attention. Okay, you can see now that we got our user data variable and we have the ID, username, password, hash, and password salt. So we have everything about the user stored inside of this variable. Uh, one thing I want to do is I'm going to remove our public username variable. I'm going to create a public, I guess I can keep it on top, public uh, user data variable going to be equal to an array. And uh, one thing I want to do is I want to create two new methods here. We're going to do get. Um, when we get, we're just going to get the variable name that they try to access. And we're going to do another one for set. And this is going to be a name and a value. So if you're not familiar with the get and the setters, uh, you can look up like PHP 5 magic methods. And you can see get and set here. Um, you can read about it here. Um, and then you can also do set, so if you want to learn about those. Okay, so what we're going to do here is when we try to get a variable, we're going to see if it, if it exists inside of our user data. So here I'm going to say if this, I'm sorry, not like that. I'm going to say return uh, this, if it's empty, at this user data name, then we're going to return null, else we're going to return this user data at our name. And when we set, we're going to actually going to do a set at this user data name equals value. Okay, so what we're doing here is anytime we try to set a variable like this, we came down here and said user, username equals Baylor Ray. 
it's because it's just like we did up here. What it's going to do is it's going to save it inside of our user data variable up here. Um, that's that's good. That's what we want it to do. I don't want to have a variable inside of here for username, password, all this stuff. I want it to be more dynamic because if you ever came in here and decided, you know what, I want a new field, I want to be able to have their first name. And we put this just for a car as 120. Okay, put that up here. Now you have their first name and you will have access to that and you don't have to create a new variable up here or and try to keep up with it. It's all going to be stored inside of here. Um, I'm going to remove that field. Okay, so what we're doing here now is you can see we have user data and we have their password data. Um, I don't we really don't need the password data and it's unvariable anymore. So we're going to remove that variable. Um, when we do this this set password, if you look at it, you can see we store it into this password data. I'm just going to create a variable called data, and I'm going to say this password salt or hash. I'm sorry, equals data hash, and this password salt equals data salt, and that'll do that. Um, that'll give that'll set the password hash and salt in here just like it did originally except now we're actually specifying it. Okay, so we're fixed a few of the little problems that we had. Um, one thing we can do here now is we can set this to just return the hash and this one return the salt. Okay, so it just it's not too different than what we had before. Okay, so right now we're all the way back down here where we find by username and you can see that we're storing our user data. Now what I want to do is I want to return our user instance because our user instance has all of this stuff. Um, one thing that we could do is we could protect this so that you don't have access to it so you can't come down here and say uh, echo user user data username like that because you can see you, you can't get to it. Um, you, but you could still do echo the username like that. Maybe not. Um, oh, well, I'm not returning my user like I want to. Uh, what I want to do eventually is just say return user. And you can see now we have the username here. Um, and we still can't do user data like that because you see we don't have access to it. Okay. So now we're right back down here. We're actually getting our user object. So we have access to everything inside of our user object. We can save them. We can set a new password. We can do all this stuff inside of this user object after we said user find by username. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I don't know how much time I have left. And I'm going to pause the video and find out. Yeah, I don't have very much time left. So the actual authentication part will be put into the second part a second part to this video um, but right now we've done pretty good in this video um, we're able to find some a user by their username so Baylor Ray that's all you have to put in here um, and you can actually get their whole user object now one thing that I want to do is I want to be able to set up where I can say if so if we find by that username then I want to Debug that username and actually look at it. So you can see we found it. But if I enter a username that doesn't exist, you can see nothing happens. Uh, so we're going to say else um, echo user not found. See, so now we got user not found. Uh, what I want to do though is I just want to set up a return value variable, and that's going to be equal to false. So by default, it's going to return false. So return false at the, I'm um, sorry, return the return value at the end of our method and when we actually find a username so we actually initialize a new user we set the user data here I just want to set our return value equal to that user so if I come back down here you can see that we get exactly what we had before so the benefit of doing it like this uh, with this one return value variable is you don't have to return here and set another return here. You only return one time in your function and that's at the very end of it. 
Uh, you could obviously, if you needed to, somewhere up here, you know, return false just to stop it from running. Uh, but because we're trying to return a value, I like to be able to put it at the very bottom so that we set a value by default at the top. Um, and we can change that value as we're going on throughout the function. But then at the very end, we return that value. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. That's going to be the end of it. The next one, we will we'll talk about actually setting it up so that you can authenticate a user by them supplying a username and password. See you later. Bye.